clear it on the dotted line. Let Philadelphia freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America! Hoping and praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. How can I see it any other way? I'm looking at a life with my own eyes. Today, Rebels need to be taught a lesson. Will you let them burn down the town? All companies march to the bridge, but hold your fire. Do not fire on the king's troops unless we're fired upon first. It's a wonder you two are still standing. April 19, 1775. Dear Mother, The people of the colonies are stubbornly independent. Raised our taxes! Did we ever say? None more so than here in Massachusetts. And who can forget our brothers who lost their lives in the Boston Massacre? Yeah! They are bent on governing themselves. Now to cry the same redcoats who just 12 years ago helped them win the French and Indian War. The British are on the move! Cousin Tom! He's serving under General Gage. Marching on Concord. What must he be thinking right now? Cousin Tom, you are the answer. Are you up already? Say, what are you doing? I'm going to find my cousin. What he's thinking is what the people of these colonies need to know. A lieutenant's perspective on the soldier's role in keeping peace. There won't be peace until we have the same rights every Englishman has. The rights we took for granted not long ago. James, these are the king's colonies. Is it reasonable to expect him to just let them disobey Parliament's laws? Is it reasonable to send soldiers to enforce tyranny? The king doesn't want trouble any more than you do. But unless both sides understand each other, trouble is bound to come. On that we agree. But Parliament has ignored our petitions. It's now up to the king to make them understand. He has the power. If only he'd use it. And that's why I'm going to see Tom, so the colonists will understand their fight is with the lawmakers, not with the soldiers. You can't. It could be dangerous. I expect it will, but this is a big story with two sides. And you can't cover both at the same time. So we'll have to work together, even with the danger. I'm off to find my cousin. I thought we were working together. Darn. Her together is faster than mine. Company, halt. See to your water supplies. Fall out. Tom? Tom Phillips? Sarah! Where? How? What are you doing here? I came to see you, of course. And who is this, Tom? This is my cousin, Sarah Phillips. Sarah, allow me to present Lieutenant Brian Johnson. Good 
did you know where to find your cousin? You're not a spy, are you? I'm a loyal British subject, thank you. I'm here to write a newspaper story. And to warn you that you and your company may be in grave danger. Don't worry, there'll be no trouble. General Gage himself said he doubts that the infernal rebels would take up arms against His Majesty's troops. Mr. Monroe, I'm James Hiller, a journalist for the Pennsylvania Gazette. I was wondering what militia this is and who is in charge. There are two companies here, James. Minute Company and Alarm. Our leader is up ahead, there at the green. And he would be? A veteran of the French and Indian Wars, Captain John Parker. Major Pitcairn, what do you make of all these bells? They announce our presence, sir. Fie, this was to have been a secret mission. I'm afraid it's no secret, sir. And I doubt we'll be able to seize the Colonial's munitions as we planned. Cursed rebels. We've endured a sleepless night and tremendous discomfort because of them. Being a soldier suits you, Tom. The finances back home left me no other choice. Still, everything works out for the best. I've done all right for myself. Every man here is proud to serve with him. But Brian's the real soldier. These ragtag colonists will wilt when faced with the likes of him. In truth, most of the colonists remain loyal to the Crown. There's only a small handful of troublemakers. I'm pleased to hear you say that. That's exactly the sort of thing my readers need to hear. Colonel Smith, the scouts report a number of armed rebels just ahead. Major, you will proceed into the township with an advance guard. I shall follow with the grenadiers. The rebels may be up to no good. Dispatch your swiftest rider to General Gage. Have him send reinforcements. The cooler heads among the rebels will carry the day if we outnumber them. You'll be perfectly safe here. If you're under orders not to harm anyone, why should I need to hide? It's just a precaution. Um, the wall will work better if you duck behind it. Should I be worried about you, Tom? Not at all. Neither side wishes to fight. I'll see you shortly. Squatting behind walls isn't very dignified for a lady, and it's useless for a journalist. Gentlemen, please form into your respective companies. What about me, Captain Parker? You're welcome to join us, lad, but you'll need a weapon. I'm afraid we have none to spare. Here's my weapon. I'd like to join as a journalist. A writer printing the right things is worth a thousand soldiers. You might want to amend that statement, sir. Light Company, advance! Sound to arms! Sound, advance! Steady, men. Stand your ground and don't fire unless fired upon. They number close to 650. How many are we? Fewer than 80, John. I should be able to see everything safely from... James! Sergeant Monroe, form ranks! Lay down your arms and disperse, and you will not be harmed. Stand your ground, men. Surround and disarm them. Please disperse. Please do as the Major says. Surround and disarm them. Charge bayonets! Light Company, advance! Surrender your arms! Never! We will not! We will We shall use force! Disarm them! Where did that come from? Who fired? Who fired? Present arms! Present arms! No! Shot at! Oh. 
Nazis fire! Sound to arms! Present arms! Present arms! No! Stop! Stop firing! Cease fire! Cease fire! Cease fire! the Boston Massacre all over again! Sound to arms! And keep those flintlocks shouldered! Does anyone know how many casualties there were? Eight dead, sir. A number of others wounded. I couldn't count them. I was... afraid. Nothing to be ashamed of. We all ran. Who fired first? I couldn't tell. It doesn't matter. It has brought us to war. A war no one wanted. I'm sorry for these disagreeable circumstances, Colonel Smith. The men show little inclination for discipline. Do not deplore the actions of your men without first examining your own, Major. We are here to seize munitions, not kill colonists. There had better be no such display in Concord. Weave a man down. Surgeon! Tom? Tom? <gasps> it's Brian. No. His leg is badly shot up. Form ranks! Tom, please don't go. I must. It's my duty. Then I'm coming with you. I don't think you should. Things could become very dangerous from here on out. Don't try to talk me out of it. A war may have started here today. I'm going to cover the story start to finish, and you're going to help me. Shoulder arms! We march to Concord! What have we done? Where are we headed, Mr. Hosmer? To the Liberty Pole. Major Buttrick's giving orders. He's a good man. We fought side by side against the French and Indians during the last war. The rumors are true. The Redcoats have shot and killed militiamen in Lexington. Two of my kinsmen among them. We we'll make them pay. No, no, how how they? They? Now What's they're headed here to Concord. The men of Acton await your orders, Major Buttrick. As do the men of the Lincoln. Men of Miriam's corner and already. Method. Excellent. We'll need every man to help defend our liberties. Follow me. We'll show them. We must defend ourselves. This Sergeant, I have a friend, a fellow journalist, who's with the British. Is there a way we can tell the men not to shoot at her? They won't aim for a woman, but these muskets are not accurate at a long distance. They could hit anybody or miss everybody. I hope that anybody is not Sarah. Look at them. How brazen. They're not even trying to conceal their strength from us. Colonel Smith, sir. Lieutenant Tom Phillips, sir. And this is my cousin, Sarah Phillips. She's a journalist. Is that so, Miss Phillips? Yes, sir. For the Pennsylvania Gazette. Ben Franklin's newspaper. Sarah is a loyal British subject, here to tell the British side of the story, sir. I believe that the majority of people here are loyal to England and supportive of the army's presence. But there are those who would paint you as monsters. I wish the colonists to know that the army is just as human as they are. And Dr. Franklin has allowed me to do that. You do have a way with words. Very well. Allow me to offer you an excellent seat and a spyglass so that you can witness my gentle-handed discipline of the rebels. Phew. Thank you, sir. Lieutenant, you are dismissed. Yes, sir. James, James, where are you? 
you there. Yes, you. Come here. Yes, sir? If you're going to report, I want you to do it from a safe distance. Nowhere near the fighting. Yes, sir. They've given us the center of town. Perhaps they want no more trouble. And neither do we. Let's not forget General Gage's orders that the people of Concord are to be treated with respect. There's smoke coming from the center of town, sir. Will you let them burn down the town? I say we go and put a stop to it. I dispatched four companies to search the Barrett farm for hidden munitions and two more to guard the North Bridge. Excellent. What happened in Lexington must not be repeated here in Concord. These rebels need to be taught a lesson. All companies, march to the bridge, but hold your fire. We'll not fire on the King's troops unless we're fired upon first. They're coming to cross the bridge, Captain Laurie. If they want the bridge, we'll give it to them. In pieces. Destroy the blanket. How dare they? That's our bridge! They can't do that! I say we can't! We can't let them do that! Let's get them! It's no use, Captain. We don't have time. Something is happening at the North Bridge. Young lady! Hold your ground! Hold your ground! Tom? We did it! We showed them! We, we showed them. those records! We drove them back! They won't try that again! Victory is ours! In the name of freedom! <sighs> Sarah? Tom? Don't worry, Sarah. This was all just a misunderstanding. We've probably put a stop to the trouble here. Yes. Yes, everyone will see what has happened and not want any more bloodshed. That's right. Everything works out for the best. I'm glad you're all right. My cousin, Tom. I'm so sorry, Sarah. Come, let's get to a safer place. April 19, 1775, continued. Oh, mother, Tom's death seems to me a sign of awful things to come. This conflict is not at all what James thought it would be. It won't be simply a contest of ideas. It promises to be a contest of arms. It promises to be everything I had prayed we would avoid. Dr. Franklin! Dr. Franklin! Moses, it's good to see you. How's London? Far away, both geographically and politically. Hey! I have news for you, Dr. Franklin. As I have for you. Moses, I used to love England. Its beauty, its culture, its people. I had hoped we could find a compromise under which the colonies and the crown could coexist peacefully. But Moses, I, and our interests were met with indifference, disrespect, contempt in what was supposed to be a meeting about recalling the governor of Massachusetts. My British friends tried to humiliate me. Is a traitor. 
He's a traitor? On the evening of 16 December, cowardly bandits attacked <gasps> the Dartmouth. And who is responsible for inflaming the subjects of Boston to this violence? None other than the man before us. You have no honor, sir. You are a scoundrel, sir. Have you nothing to say for yourself? The heart of a fool is in his mouth, but the mouth of a wise man is in his heart. Ah, the famous Franklin wit. Perhaps I need to remind you, a rope is the proper reward for treason. Being in England convinced me that a fight between the colonies and the crown is now inevitable. Being here would have convinced you of the same thing. British soldiers fired on our people at Lexington and Concord. The crown's men fired upon her own subjects? Unthinkable. Tell me everything, Moses. Here, you can read all about it. The Shot Heard Round the World by James Hiller and Sarah Phillips. I'm very proud of them. And now we must prepare for war. <laughs>